My name is McLaren Shirley. I am a biology major with a marine biology emphasis and I am from Chicago, but my family lives in Florida now. The title of my project is Understanding the Effects of Ocean Acidification on Gastropods Utilizing the Cosmin Shell Collection. Ocean acidification is a chemical process caused by the human release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which then gets absorbed into the ocean and then leads to a series of chemical reactions that result in an increase in acidity in the ocean. The Cosmin Shell Collection is a collection of over 117,000 mollusk shells, mainly consisting of things like gastropods and bivalves, which are marine snails, and then things like clams and oysters. Um, they were all, or most of them, were collected by one man, Dieter Cosmin. He was a hobbyist shell collector, he was a diver, and he was just very, um, very dedicated to collecting shells, and he was quite good at it. He was also quite meticulous in recording what we call metadata. I have always had the personality of a collector, so I do have a lot of seashells and shark teeth. Those are my two favorite things to collect from the beach. So when I got the opportunity to work with such a robust collection, it's definitely very exciting. I have measured close to 2,000 individual um, gastropod specimens from this collection. I measured different shell morphometrics, and I would say that the most significant finding, or the one that I am most excited and concerned about, is the metric that I took the length of the shells and divided it by the weight of the shells. So this, I have 19 families in my, in my project, um, and 14 of them were shown to be getting lighter over time in sort of a standardized fashion in relation to their length. What's concerning about these changes in morphometrics, so the reduction in size over time and the reduction in density over time, is that in all of these previous experiments, ocean acidification has been shown to affect essentially shell health and organism health. When you're looking at it in a museum collection, looking at the real oceanographic changes that have been occurring over time, it's really concerning to see that over a 30-year period, which isn't really that long when you consider chemical changes in the ocean because it's so large and it takes a long time for things to change, but they are changing. These changes in shell size and density, I mean, my research is only covering, you know, one class of organisms, gastropods, across a few families. But when you look at all of the literature backing ocean acidification research, and then mine, which is demonstrating these changes or observing these changes rather in a pretty wide taxonomic group and occurring in the ocean, not in an experiment. Um, the consequences this can have for ecosystems are somewhat concerning, even past just the gastropods that are being maybe more directly affected than organisms that don't build shells. It's, it can be surprising how these little changes just in one group of organisms can really sort of ricochet around the entire oceanographic environment and entire ecosystems. My faculty mentor, Dr. Stubler, has been amazing in helping this research. She has, you know, always been available when I need it, always been able to answer questions, but also allowed me to sort of go through the process of being the lead on this project. If you are interested in starting research at Occidental, the easiest thing you can do is go to a faculty member who you like or whose work you're interested in or who maybe you have a class with and approach them and ask about research opportunities. It's really, it, they, it's really easy here. <laughs> faculty always have a lot of interesting projects going on and they're also very nice and they will talk to you about any opportunities going on, whether it's volunteering or for credit. And 
Don't be intimidated that you feel like you have to, you know, start your own project right away. I think every researcher at Occidental starts out with helping either a faculty member's project or another student's project, maybe a junior, or senior, a higher level student. They start out assisting with that and then that sort of gets you the experience you need to move on to, you know, your own project independent research. So just approach faculty and it's and you'll get there. There'll there'll be a lab you can join.